good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Austin. I'll be our moderator for the June Town Hall, which is also going to serve as our 2021 uh, legislative interview. Uh, I, before I get started, I want to give a, a thank you to all involved uh, for setting up this event. It's always great when we can hear from uh, our elected officials because the most important thing for our government is to be honest, humble with us, and of course to, to serve the public. And this is exactly what this type of forum does and, and gives us an opportunity for. Our first discussion will be on the topic of COVID-19. Obviously, this was uh, a, a public health emergency that affected us in so many different ways, not just in a public health aspect, but also, you know, with all these unintended consequences. If we can, I'll start from Representative Proctor here on my right. Uh, the bill that was uh, passed by the legislature in order to address uh, government overreach regarding COVID-19. As we go down the, the line here, please explain us what your vote was uh, and of course why you, you voted that way. All right. Uh, first of all, thank you, Michael, for, uh, for moderating today and uh, thank you, uh, Melinda, for this great idea. Appreciate it. Um, when I, uh, when I decided to uh, run all those uh, years ago, um, I honestly was laser focused on getting my neighbors back to work. Um, but as the pandemic hit and businesses got shuttered and we all got told we had to stay in our homes, and then just one after another, just the impositions after impositions on our basic rights, I got more and more fired up about uh, how our, you know, our constitutional rights were being trampled on. And, you know, on May 21st last year, uh, when the, in the last day of the regular session of the legislature, I was out there with a lot of people in this room uh, on the Capitol lawn demanding that we do something to uh, correct this problem. Um, and the legislature answered, but it was sort of a, you know, it was what they could do with with one day to legislate because they got called back for a special session. It was really just letting the counties opt out. Uh, but that was always kind of a stopgap measure to create some kind of check on the governor's power until we could get uh, more permanent legislation. I was thrilled when we got the new KEMA bill, the new Kansas Emergency Management Act bill that repaired a lot of the issues that were embedded in that bill. Um, and I, I don't want to steal everybody's thunder, but uh, I voted for that. If uh, Representative Neely got up from his desk, I'm going to reach over there and vote for it again. Uh, but I, you know, I, uh, I'll tell you what, I was enthusiastic about voting for, uh, voting for that bill because, you know, whether we're talking about, you know, whether we're talking about taxes or, or spending on roads or, uh, you know, uh, deciding health care decisions or our basic rights, no one person should have the right to make a unilateral decision with no check or balance from yeah. anybody else. Yeah. Fundamental, you know, and fundamental to our system is that decisions are made by elected officials, not by unelected bureaucrats. And I think what this, what this bill did, most fundamentally, was restore your voice through your legislators up here and in other districts in uh, decisions about how we were going to respond to COVID. Thank you, Pat, and thank you all for being here tonight. Um, it has been a, a uh, weird year, to say the least. Um, last year, the uh, pandemic hit us. Uh, the governor declared an, an emergency. Legislature pretty much had to pass the budget and get out of town. It was uh, everybody was concerned for the first few weeks. Uh, the legislature actually gave the uh, governor a extension on the emergency because we knew it wasn't going to be solved in 15 days. And in 15 days, she would have had to ask for an extension. So we went ahead and gave her for like 47 days of an emergency powers to go ahead and get this thing under control. That was uh, about the last extension that I have really supported. Ever since then, she has been doing these extensions. Uh, 
with a lot of excuses for these extensions, but none of them really valid. She just wants to keep the emergency power so she can continue to uh, mandate things to us. So it's been uh, it's been a long year. Uh, the, the legislature was pretty much cut out of the entire uh, situation. The governor, uh, I don't know if you remember, but a year ago at Easter, the LCC, the Legislative Coordinating Council, actually uh, told the governor, no, nope, you can't put restrictions on churches. You cannot reduce, you cannot restrict the number of people in the churches. And she took the legislature, the LCC, and the Attorney General to court, Supreme Court, Supreme Court sided with her. And after that, it was pretty much the governor ran the show. The legislature just sat on the sidelines because we were out of session. And so she pretty much had to wait whatever way she wanted to go on this thing. Like Pat said, uh, we first priority this year, even to me almost as important as value them both, was updating the uh, Kansas Emergency Management Act. That had to be updated quickly. We had to get control of the governor. We had to get the legislature back involved. And I think we did that. I think we've got a, we did a good job of doing that. With the LCC, she, right after we gave her the last extension, she came back and we took away the mask mandate that she had. She came back and said, well, I'm gonna put it back on. The LCC said, no, you're not. And that was the end of it. So it's working. The, gut, the legislature's back involved in the process and that's what we needed. So uh, it's been a long year, but I think we've got the controls we needed. Thank you. Making sure this one's on. Uh, first off, I'm still waiting for something that uh, Governor Kelly says that I haven't voted against. Um, I think there was a lunch or something she picked, and I didn't agree with that one either. But uh, uh, I'm one of the lucky ones that actually got to hear the Kima bill as it came through committee. Uh, when I say lucky, that that I'm joking because it was dozens and dozens of pages of things that uh, many did not realize were involved with uh, uh, the Emergency Act. And uh, one of the big things that we had to look at was we were using the National Guard and the ability to use the National Guard uh, requires us to have the Emergency Act in place uh, you can't just turn around and ask the National Guard to all of a sudden be truck drivers uh, and haul stuff around. There has to be an emergency act in place. Uh, that was one of the reasons for the extension uh, in order so that they could uh, proceed in getting the vaccinations out. It's one of the few things that actually ran smoothly. Uh, when you start talking about our military, uh, they are excellent and they're fantastic at getting things done and if we'd have done that sooner everything we probably wouldn't have been last on the list in getting our uh, vaccines out to people uh, but I heard uh, about four days of uh, the chemo bill and uh, in judiciary and it was uh, uh, you know very very intricate we worked very hard uh, there were a lot of things in there that uh, we put in place just in case because our governor is is one of those that's way over here. No, you just like that. She's way left. But uh, they uh, we had to put in that she not stop uh, selling firearms, that she didn't stop selling ammunition uh, in in the emergency act. Uh, these are ridiculous things that, that uh, you know, we had to consider. But when we started to talk, thinking about our governor, we said, yeah, that's probably something we should go ahead and put in there. So anyway, uh, I wholeheartedly uh, voted to, to get her out of the process and, and uh, uh, get it back and everything to where uh, the legislative uh, voice was, was being heard and, and involved with. 
I am Jim Johnson down in the 38th district, and I am proud to announce I found out on Wednesday of last week <laughs> that I am actually a member of the Wyandotte County delegation now. There is one house that was annexed in Leavenworth County by Bonner Springs. One house. Talk to the mayor. They're going to love me. Wyandotte County now has at least one Republican in their delegation. I also want to make sure you understand that Ron Ellis out of Jefferson County might as well live over here. He is a wonderful uh, addition to the band of four. Um, he has supported us, the, the Veterans Committee, and uh, so what I wanted to mention on the COVID issue was not what they said, because I was on the K-12 Education Committee, and we were dealing with school districts that were basically just closing down their schools, going remote, and the kids were losing education. They wanted their money. They wanted more money more money, more money, but they weren't even in schools. And we're not talking necessarily about my district, Baser Linwood, DeSoto, Tom or some of those. But to the east, where I am now the delegate, there was one large district that basically the teachers stayed at home at the request of their teachers union, which shall go unnamed, KDA, and <laughs> the kids weren't learning, they were at home and they were going to come back because it was so dangerous. We just didn't understand. I do understand, I grew up in Wyandotte County. I knew exactly what that district's like. I have family there. And we battled, and in fact, they didn't go back to school until on the floor, we brought some legislation, Christy Williams, uh, the chair of the K through 12 education, to make them come back. Two of the largest school districts in the state and there were a couple other districts. They fought it tooth and nail. As soon as that came up on the floor three days later, they were able to go back to school. I don't understand how that happened. But that was critical, and I really feel that was an attitude that the governor's office could have dealt with, is getting kids back to school. So I think that was an issue that was also critical in this COVID situation. Thank you so much for, for all of your responses. Uh, let's do a quick uh, show of hands on the uh, Kima bill. If you voted to pass the Kima bill, would you please raise your hand? Thank you. <laughs> you guys have great answers. Just want to make sure we're all understood, you know, where we all stand on the issues.